Hello, my name is Missy Holbrook. I'm a professor in the Department of Organismic and Evolutionary Biology here at Harvard. I study trees and forests, and I've always been fascinated by trees and the ecosystems that surround them. Let's take a short tour of a tree. We can start by asking a simple question. What is a tree? A tree is a woody plant characterized by a single dominant stem called a trunk. Many smaller woody branches that emerge from the trunk carry the leafy foliage of the tree. At the base, the tree is anchored by roots that flare downward and outward into the ground. Trees are critical players in forest ecosystems the world over. But how do they work? Leaves are the sugar-making factories that supply the tree with energy. The process of making sugars, called photosynthesis, requires sunlight. So the leaves are concentrated high up on the tree where light is abundant. To understand how leaves work, let's look inside. An outer layer of cells, the epidermis, covers the leaf. The epidermis has a waxy coating or cuticle to prevent water loss. Pores, called stomata, are generally found on the lower epidermis or the underside of the leaf. The stomata allow CO2, needed for photosynthesis, to enter the leaf. At the same time, however, water vapor diffuses out of these pores. This is the reason that plants require so much water. Stomata can open and close in response to environmental conditions, allowing a leaf to restrict water loss when soils are dry. Just beneath the upper epidermis are tightly packed elongated cells called palisade mesophyll. Palisade cells are positioned at the top of the leaf to absorb maximum sunlight. They are loaded with chloroplast, specialized organelles that carry out photosynthesis. Spongy mesophyll is a layer of loosely packed cells with fewer chloroplast. Stomata in the lower epidermis allow CO2 from the outside to pass into the air spaces of the spongy mesophyll. Using water, CO2, and sunlight, chloroplast in the mesophyll carry out photosynthesis. Oxygen, a gaseous byproduct of photosynthesis, is released into the air. Running in between the palisade and the spongy mesophyll are the veins of the leaf. They contain the two vascular tissues, the xylem and the phloem. The xylem brings water and minerals up from the roots, and the phloem transports the sugars produced by photosynthesis to the other parts of the tree, where they are used in respiration and growth. The trunk of the tree and its branches support the weight of the foliage. As they grow upward and outward, the trunk and branches help the leaves gain maximum exposure to the sunlight necessary for photosynthesis. The trunk and branches also provide a conduit for water and nutrients to travel from one part of the tree to another. To understand how the trunk supports these functions, let's look inside. The bark on the surface of the tree consists of older, dead layers of woody tissue that protect the tree from damage, desiccation, and predators. Beneath the protective outer bark is living bark tissue containing the active phloem. This layer receives sugars produced by the leaves during photosynthesis and transports them to all other parts of the tree. Just inside the active phloem is the cambium, a layer of actively dividing cells that allow the tree to increase its girth. This growth creates new phloem cells on the cambium's outer edge. On its inside, the cambium produces a layer of elongated cells called xylem. As the xylem cells grow, the walls between them disintegrate. Their side walls become thicker and stronger. In this way, they form long, continuous tubes for carrying water and dissolved nutrients. Each spring, a new layer of xylem is produced. The old xylem ceases to function and eventually it becomes part of the heartwood of the tree. In a seasonal environment like New England, this process creates growth rings that reveal the age and life history of the tree.
The roots of the tree are critical support structures. Thick, strong roots radiate downward and outward from the base of the tree, anchoring it firmly in the ground. Another, even more important function of roots is to extract water and minerals from the soil. To learn how this works, let's take a closer look. The surface of the root is known as the epidermis. Some of the epidermal cells form long thread-like extensions. Called root hairs, these extensions increase surface area, thereby improving the root's ability to absorb water and minerals from the soil. Just inside the root's epidermis is the cortex. The innermost layer of the cortex is the endodermis, which surrounds the vascular tissue of the root. The endodermis acts like a gasket, regulating the movement of water and nutrients that enter the root's vascular system to be taken up by the xylem. From here, water and nutrients are carried through the tree's trunk and branches to the leaves, where they support the process of photosynthesis. At the same time, sugars transported by the phloem are taken into the cortex to feed the root's growth or are converted to starch and stored for future use. Some of these sugars also flow out from the roots into the surrounding soil. Here they feed bacteria and fungi that help the tree gain access to soil nutrients.